All right. Hello, everyone. It's Farrick, and welcome back to another Wizard 101 video. In this video, I'm going to be putting my foot down and explaining to you why, in my opinion, it is currently at this moment not worth at all min maxing your damage in Wizard 101 and why this is a hill I am willing to die on. Now, real quick, before we get started, I do want to mention that if you have a min-max setup or a quint damage pet or whatever, I'm not saying that you should go trash that setup, get rid of all the gear. I'm not saying that at all. I'm simply saying right now, that is not the best setup to have in any situation at all. And I do not recommend anyone try to go for that setup right now because there are better setups. I do plan on releasing a Lemuria farming gear guide set up for all schools tomorrow and in that video i will not be using a min max damage setup damage is still an important stat in the game however it is not the only important stat if you want to be able to have the best time and farm and do pve as efficiently as possible now that we've gotten that out of the way let me give you reason number one as to why you shouldn't min max your damage stats and the very first reason is actually that damage as a stat becomes less and less useful the larger your team is to the point where it becomes almost completely useless. So if I have this calculator up right here, if I have a full team with four people, if I use 435 blades at the beginning, I have 3.32 as my multiplier off of that utility. Now, this is 232% damage. With the current damage limits, it is literally impossible to get anywhere near that amount. And I'm going to show you this specific setup that I have right now. This is 170% damage. So in one turn, I'm already able to do way more than my current damage multiplier is, which means if you have 0% damage, you are at most one turn behind someone that has the best, highest possible damage that you could possibly get in the game. And that is with a person that has zero damage with a four person team. I'm going to show you this right now. All right, so to demonstrate exactly which point I was making earlier, I'm going to jump into combat here with a d setup that gives me 170% damage after the damage limits. Um, there's nothing special about this setup. It just gives me a lot of damage. It's not the most damage setup, but it should helpfully prove the point I'm trying to make here. So I'm just going to jump into fight here with a full team like I was talking about earlier. And with this setup, I do have critical, so uh, I have a 95% chance to guarantee pretty much double my hit. This first test, I'm going to show you with 170% damage with no buffs from my team, how much this Thunderman does. The reason I'm using this spell is because it's the lowest pip spell that I'll always have four pips to get. That'll do a consistent amount of damage, no damage range. So let's go ahead and use this 205 on this Lost Soul right here. I'm going to pass on my other characters because this is testing the higher damage without using any buffs because in the next demonstration, I'm going to take off all my gear that gives me damage, spend one initial turn to blade myself four times, and then show you how much damage that does with just one extra turn. So we use this right here, Jolted Snowman. It did 1108. So with a critical, no enchant, that did 1108 with 170% damage. Now I'm going to take off all of my gear that gives me damage. I'm going to have 0% damage. And I'm going to buff myself with a 35 blade on all four characters to set up the initial turn that it takes to catch up to that damage with 0% damage. And then use Jolted Snow Man, and then we'll see how much it does. Alright, so I've now taken off all of my gear that gives me any damage at all. As you can see, I have 0% damage. The only things that I have on is a wand, and that's just so I can get a starting power pip, and a deck so I can get a starting pip, so that I can guarantee use that spell first turn. And it gives me critical, which, to keep the test consistent, I will be able to crit at a 2 times multiplier on both situations, so that the test is fair. So, once again, I have 0% damage. This time, I'm going to jump into battle here on all these characters. And I'm going to use a 35 blade on every single character to set up the initial turn that I'm talking about that you need to catch up the damage. So I'm going to use, in fact, I'll use this last. I'll use the other characters. So I'm going to use a Dark Pact, an Elemental Blade, and a TC Storm Blade. As you can see, this is a 35 blade. This is two 35 blades, but it, it only uses up one of them at a time. So it puts on two, two 35 blades that are the same. Uh, this is a 35 blade, this is a 35 blade, and I'm putting a 35 blade on myself. These all stack. One is a, t one is a Dark Pact, one is a TC Storm Blade, one is an Elemental Blade, and one is a Train Storm Blade. The Dark Pact is two blades, but once again, it'll only count one of them for this hit first hit. The, the other one is used for another hit. I 
I should have timed this too, by the way, just to show how much longer this one extra turn takes. And obviously, I'm not saying you jump in with 0% damage in the battles. Uh, I'm just saying that damage is really, really not as crazy as people seem to think. Especially when you're talking about going for like 5 six percent damage whatever whatever like crazy like exact damages people go for while sacrificing all the other stats that's the point i'm trying to make here but i'll get on to that more in the video this is just going to be a demonstration so now as you can see i have four different buffs on i have that 35 universal i have the 35 storm blade the 35 from the elemental and then the 35 from the train storm blade uh, i'm now going to pass on all these other characters because remember in the last test i passed on all of them and i just used a straight up jolted snowman this initial turn i used just to set up um, so one extra turn, I have a 95% chance to do another two X critical. So, you know, it's a fair test. I don't have more critical damage multiplier off that. So everything's consistent. I just have less base gear damage and I'm now compensating for that by having those four initial 35 blades. And as you saw earlier, I did like a 3.32 multiplier, which is higher than the possible damage cap. So let's see how much this jolted snowman does now. I crit again, so it's gonna do the two times multiplier. These are the four buffs. This took one turn to do. And there you go. It actually does more damage with this than it did before. And I have zero percent. Look, look, look at this, look at this. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna quit out of the game. I'm going to quit out of the game and show you. Look at this. Uh, this is not, <laughs> I'm not trying to like, look, zero percent damage in one turn. That's all it took. And that is 170. That is some of the highest damage you can get in the game. So hopefully this proves the point that in a four-person team, your damage stat really does not matter that much. Now, a counter-argument to this point could be, you know, if damage is useless with a four-person team, doesn't resist also become useless? Well, yes, all stats in general become a lot less useful when you're with a four-person team because resist does not become as important because the battle ends in fewer turns, so you don't really need the resist as much, and then damage becomes useless because you have so much utility to compensate for the any any lack of damage or anything like that but the reason why resist is great is still good is because it's an effective hp type stat it works along with your hp so what do i mean by this well let's open up the calculator again in the last video i made similar to this it was about how uh quint damage pets were not worth it and i don't think i did a great job of explaining but i have 7722 hp right i have 46 resist now what this means is in order to defeat me, the enemy needs to do this much damage, or this health bar needs to go to zero. But resist works alongside this in a way where if I have 46% resist, that means my opponent has one minus 0.46. That means their damage multiplier has to be multiplied by this because that's how much damage they're able to do effectively with their hit as a percentage or whatever because of how much resist i have and that's this uh, that's factoring in their pierce whatever if i have 46 resist after all their pierce is factored in their damage multiplier has to be multiplied by this spell and so what this means right here is i have to divide my health by that number by that effective damage multiplier so they need to do without with their buffs taken into consideration and everything before you consider my resist they need to do 14,300 damage to get this health bar to zero, given my resist. That is why resist is an important stat. It effectively increases your HP. Now, 14,300 with 46 resist. Let's assume I had 29 resist, which is about how much... Uh, actually, that's exactly how much I would have if I didn't have my double resist for my pet. As you can see, I have 17 from it. 46 minus 17 is 29. So, if I had 29, that we do 1 minus 0.29, we have 0.71, that's their effective damage. Now, if I divide 7722 divided by 0.71, I have effectively 10,876 HP. Even if we round this to 11,000, I effectively have over 3,300 more HP with this setup, just by sacrificing two damage talents, which, by the way... And uh, I might not be able to have the exact number on this, but I'm going to put on my mount here. I have 169 damage with this setup, right? I'm actually going to go to Final Bastion because they have a calculator. Because the the person that made the formula for the, the damage limits made a tool on Final Bastion, which I will link down below. But basically, if I go to Damage Resist Pierce Calculator, I have 180 damage. That, that brings it down to 169 after the limits. If I type this into, uh, let's see, 180 damage, Calculate. As you can see, PVE multiplier, 2.68. And by the way, this is this is made by Charlie at Final Bastion. Uh, shout out to him. I'm going to leave 
uh, credit and everything like that, where you can access the tool, this tool down in the description below. It's a great tool. I use it all the time for, for stats and stuff, but 2.68, obviously because it's at 0.8, it rounds up to 169 and that's where you get the 169 from. Now, if I had a, if I use my two double resist talents, on uh and i had that 29 resist which gives me once again effectively 3300 more like 3500 less hp um i would have uh this number right here would go up to 188 and if we go here 188 damage calculate is 172 so it would round up to 173 so i'd have effectively four more damage and once again we're gonna pull up the calculator 2.74 divided by 2.69 is this tiny bit so if i multiply this by 10,000 damage which yeah 10,000 damage that's like a little bit less than what boss health is nowadays i think boss health average right now in lemuria is like 15,000 13,000 somewhere around there i'm doing 185 more damage that is literally it and i'm losing 3.5k hp now once again this is important because uh when you are farming that damage difference will almost never it doesn't matter if you overkill by a thousand a million a billion whatever 185 the game doesn't care most likely you are already setting up to overkill by thousands of damage anyways so the game's not going to care if you do another 185 damage the game sees that you do enough damage and it sees that your health is not zero and when you are farming you want to spend less time getting health wisps. You want to spend less time using potions. You want to spend less time using healing because at the end of the day, when you're doing something over and over again, when you're farming, you're going to want to spend as little time as possible. By using heals, you're wasting time. By using potions, more often, you're wasting time. By using health wisps, you're wasting time. I'm going to actually give you an example of this real quick. A perfect example of what I'm talking about here is abandoned house farming for King Detritus. There are still a lot of people farming for Dragoon gear. In my opinion, it still is the best gear in the game for PvE. And for this, for a single piece of gear, if you're not crafting the hat or whatever, because the hat drops super easily from this dungeon for the Vanguard hat, so you need less extract. If you're crafting any other piece of Dragoon gear, you need 480 extract. Now, if you're doing the standard, just doing the whole dungeon, you're getting about 10 extract per run. And if you are using a setup that makes you take so much damage for no reason, that has such little resist, you have to get health wisps every single battle. Let's say it takes your team an extra 15 seconds each run to collect these health wisps, which may not necessarily always be here. You might need multiple health wisps, so you need to do a little bit of walking around. You could also accidentally get pulled by these trash mobs because they actually pull you pretty easily that's 15 seconds extra and you might be thinking that's not that much time 15 seconds that's pretty much nothing uh, if it means i get to use my super high damage setup which does absolutely nothing for me in this fight by the way why not like let me just do that well here's the thing you need 480 extract you get 10 extract per run do the math that's that's four here you know what i'll do the math for you 480 extract divided by 10 that's 48 runs if it takes you an extra 15 seconds that's an extra 720 seconds. Guess what? You're wasting 12 minutes. 12 minutes that you could have saved. In those 12 minutes, you could have gotten a couple extra runs done. You actually save time by doing all this. You lost absolutely nothing by lowering your damage and increasing your resist. You just save time because you don't have to spend less time getting health wisps. And that is, by the way, for one piece of Dragoon gear. You could save a full hour of getting health wisps just by having better stats. Now, this is just one piece of Dragoon gear, and this is very specific to this situation, but this can be applied in so many other ways. The game is super long. This is not the only thing you have to farm in the game. There are a lot of other things you have to farm, and overall, the amount of time you save is even greater. So why not save that time instead of going for a setup that... I still can't think of a single battle where you'd actually need to actually min-max your damage, regardless of what school you are. I, I can't think of a single scenario, especially when you're with a 4 per You just do not need to do that. It is not worth it. Now, you might be thinking, aha, you just said the bigger the team is, the less useful damage is. That must mean when you're soloing, you really, really need damage. Well, yes, damage does become more important when you are soloing, but so do the rest of your stats. And the reason for this is because you are alone. You don't have your team to carry you in utility, which means it takes more rounds. Yes, that means you have less utility to boost your damage, and that means that your actual damage does matter a lot more, a lot more quickly. However, 
that also means the battle takes longer therefore you need better defensive stats you need better health you need better resist uh that stuff doesn't matter more you need more block uh you know having more crit is better because again you have less utility from your 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 friends in general stats are more important when you are soloing rather than when you are on a team that goes for defensive and offensive stats the point i'm trying to make with this video is there is more to the game than just damage right now health is a great stat resist is a great stat perfect pips and accuracy should be the first thing you should focus on uh damage is a great stat don't get me wrong you should try to get it as high as possible but not while sacrificing other stats crit is important it is rng extra additional damage added on top of whatever damage you already have pierce is important Pe mobs are starting to use shields a lot more they're starting to use brace a lot you need to have pierce i don't know why people ignore this specific stat even if you are going to go full offensive and at least just sacrifice resist health and block for it but for some reason people sacrifice pierce as well and i'll get more into that in a bit here so yeah make sure you're focusing if you are trying to min max at least focus on other offensive stats like crit and pierce as well so let's get more into the video now that we've tackled the solo argument. All stats are important. All stats are more important when you are soloing, not just damage. A couple small points I do want to throw out there that are also arguments against this whole min-maxing damage. One, you do save time, maybe even crowns on making less gear setups because the types of setups that I will show y'all tomorrow work in so many more situations and you don't really need to make many more setups, which means you make less pets, you need to spend less time or crowns. Obviously on this character right here, this is part of my budget walkthrough series for those of you that don't know it. I think it's an amazing series. I highly recommend it. Um, I don't spend money on anything except memberships, so I can't spend crowns on making pets. I'm limited by the amount of time I'm able to make pets. So I don't want to waste that time making unnecessary gear setups. Also, if you don't, if you do spend money on crowns and you know, time is not really as much of a factor, you're still spending money that you don't need to spend making extra setups that you don't need to make things that you could wait later on in end game to try to make those setups i'm not saying don't make them i'm saying if you are going to make a setup that you're going to use in questing and you don't already have a setup make one that is going to be more useful for a variety of different things rather than just make one another small point i'd like to add before i get into another important thing is that in higher level worlds the bosses have more peers king detritus already had 20 percent pierce which these min max setups you'll see them they have only around like 20 resist up to 29 resist around that in lemuria now the bosses are actually close to 30 percent pierce so the pierce is actually increasing to the point where if you don't have any resist or if you don't have that much resist you effectively have zero resist because of how much pierce they have pierce is a stat that subtracts from your resist another point i'd like to mention is that damage limits do exist and to get the best highest damage on six out of the seven schools it actually requires this robe right here the royal fusiliers or fusiliers i don't even know how to pronounce it dress coat for those of you that don't know what this is it comes from the yuletide pack which keep in mind that pack is already cheaper than other packs it costs i think either 199 or 299 crowns it costs less than the normal pack which is usually 399 so it costs less packs yet people will still easily spend 15 to 20,000 crowns trying to get this. I personally spent 18,000 crowns to get this, and that is around the average of what you can expect to spend. Don't expect to get this in under 10,000 crowns. The drop rates on this specific robe are insanely rare, and as you can see, this gives me more damage than even my Radiant Light Brigade armor. Uh, as you can see, uh, 26 as opposed to 23. For six out of the seven schools, this robe gives the most damage, and I personally don't even use it just because of how I feel on other stats, but even if you were min-maxing, by getting this robe, you're encouraging making the best stats only available on pack gear, and I personally believe that is just bad game design. I think the best stats should be achievable through farming. Yes, they are a company. Yes, they are a business. Yes, they need to make money, but what they could do is make it so that for most people it is still much better to just open the pack save all that grinding to try to just buy this if they really want to and then for the people that truly want to farm for it make the drop rate insanely low make it like an amulet of divine type drop make it so that most people will just want to spend the the, the 10 15 minutes to just spam the pack 
for $30 or whatever. And obviously that is a much better use of their time than grinding for like a week straight, maybe even a month straight trying to get this robe, you know? And this is just obviously a specific example, but this applies to things like mounts as well. Like, you know, this Stompy Bronto. Um, this is obviously a little bit less egregious of a flaw in my opinion, because this mount, you technically only need one of them for the entire count. But I guess that also applies to this robe as well. You only really need one of this. It's a universal robe. So, um, again, I feel like, in my opinion, that's just another side point. I think the best stats should be achievable through farming, even if paying money is still the better time efficient option it's an mmo dude the point of an mmo is to grind i want to be able to grind for the best stats not pay my way out of it i'd do something else if, if that was the case you know so main point is damage limits exist going for these uh min max damage stats encourages a bunch of pack stuff a, a bunch of bundle stuff things like that and honestly I think Kingzel is going in that direction of, you know, you, you do get to grind for the best stats. By implementing these damage limits, they've now made it so that these packs are not really worth it that much. And it's just another point to add that I, that I thought was worth mentioning. So anyways, let's move on to another really big argument that I want to make, and that'll probably be the end of the video. This last argument leads into pretty much what will be tomorrow's gear setup video. That is the argument on whether or not Merciless gear is worth it over dragoon gear bottom line you should absolutely still stick with dragoon if you are try if you don't have either of the two pieces of gear and you want the best stats you don't care about how much time it takes to get them dragoon is still better in my opinion and i will show you why right here on a death wizard which is one of the few schools that can even use the merciless gear without having to make like a specific pet for it while maintaining perfect pips and accuracy and that is a point worth mentioning because i feel like if you want to call merciless better than dragoon it shouldn't be the best gear on only three or four of the seven schools. So I'm just going to show it on a death, which is a school that can even consider using it as the best gear and whatnot. So real quick, um, uh, once again, I'm going to show these setups in tomorrow's video. I don't have all of them complete quite yet. I just need a few more pip jewels and I'll be ready to record the video and, and show you all the setups. But I should actually probably go to Lemuria for this. So one second, let me let me go to Lemuria because that's where I want to show you this. This is once again with the three piece Dragoon gear. It just gives me more health and block and I sacrifice a little bit of damage and crit. So I have 512 crit, 158 damage with this setup. Perfect pips and accuracy. Let's get these ones, these Storm Doctor Pruner regulars. All right, we got one storm one and now let's see what the multiplier is 1.58 now with the merciless setup i'm gonna go ahead and equip this uh ignoring the fact that look at how much utility i'm losing i'm losing the mass uh death trap which is really good for pve i'm losing sharpened blade and potent trap which is really good for pve if i were to make this a fair comparison and use the merciless gear and use you know the, the same the same amulet basically um sure you know this this gear set allows me to use the uber which is slightly more defensive sure let's, let's, let's go for it why not give me the storm one there we go so now my multiplier on the storm one with the 200 with the 2.61 is 1.55 so 1.55 with 2.61 i'm gonna quit out real quick and we're once again gonna pull up the calculator So my crit is lower by 3% with this equal setup. Same health, same, pretty much same resist, same defensive stats. Um, I'm just using Merciless Hat and Boots now instead of uh, Dragoon. My crit is lower by 3. My damage is higher by 3. So whatever I gained in damage, I lost in crit. And it actually works differently it, it, there's actually more to it i i mentioned this in one of my budget walkthrough streams but it's something to do with quadratics and squares or whatever but basically when you have two multipliers like that and the difference is the same but the the, the product is still greater if the two numbers are closer to each other so the more square it is the bigger the area that, that, that's like i'm probably doing a bad job of explaining it but basically 1.55 times 2.61 is 4.055 and if you remember, the previous multiplier for the Dragoon set with 1.58 times 2.58, that is greater. So even though you the, the amount of damage you gain is equal to the amount of crit that you lose, you still do more damage with the crit than you do with the damage. And this, by the way, once again, as I will show you in the gear setups tomorrow, death, life, balance, I believe those are the only schools, maybe myth as well, are the only schools 
that can actually even use the new merciless gear storm and fire without a specific different type of pet you just straight up can't even use them so you'll actually not gain anything and once again this is ignoring all the utility that the dragoon gear gives so uh, that is hopefully the uh, explanation to the merciless gear argument and uh yeah so anyways that is my reasoning for why i think it is not worth min maxing your damage stat it is not the only stat that is important in pve and farming um if there's anything that i missed i would appreciate y'all letting me know in the comments uh, i want it to be a conversation down below in the comments keep it keep it civil keep it respectful please uh, if you have a differing opinion that's perfectly fine i do want to hear out other people's arguments in the comments down below for if they do have uh, a full offensive setup what their reasonings are if they can find a fight where it is better to have it because i for some reason cannot find a single scenario where you'd actually need to min max that much so that is my argument i will be releasing the gear guide tomorrow because i'm pretty much done getting my jewels so hopefully y'all will stay tuned for that if you want to know when i release future videos like that make sure to sub to the channel hit the bell icon to enable notifications if you enjoyed this video please leave a thumbs up i would appreciate it let me know down in the comments below once again and also if you disliked it you can dislike it but the you the freaking dislike button is gone so that doesn't really do anything i appreciate each and every one of you i don't think i've said this in a video yet but thank you all so much for 15,000 subscribers and 2 million channel views we pretty much hit both those milestones back to back so sincerely from the bottom of my heart thank you this journey has been amazing i hope to continue it my college semester is starting soon so i don't know how much i'll be able to be consistent with it but i'll try my best and i'll try to be on top of things this time around so anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, have a good evening.